victory All black magic in Kiwi Pride Silver ferns emblazoned on the side New Zealand sharing our emotion New Zealand carry us away New Zealand sailing across the ocean into any big project where it's hard and unless it's going to be really difficult to achieve the goal at the end of the day, be it the prize or whatever, it's not worth going into. If it's going to be really hard and maybe almost put into the impossible bracket, then it's worth going for. the greatest days in New Zealand's history. The country unified and euphoric like never before, after Team New Zealand finally conquered Yachting Zealand. New Zealand's first challenge for the America's Cup was with KZ7 of Fremantle in 86-87. A year later, Sir Michael Fay challenged the San Diego Yacht Club with his controversial big boat, KZ-1. In 1992, NZL-20 carried New Zealand's hopes into the America's Cup, and Peter Blake first became involved in New Zealand's quest of the old muck. At the end of the 1992 challenge with, um, uh, with Michael Fay, I really hadn't enjoyed my time, I don't think, in San Diego. Not, not in a, not in the way that I should have. I thought it was um, we, we could we could have done better, but not in the latter stages. The, the doing better had to be sorted out right at the start of the project. But I also thought the whole thing was a, it was a yachting contest. There's nothing more than that. Now people make the America's Cup into some grandiose project um, that it doesn't need to be made into. So I thought if we um, approached it the right way, we actually had a did have a very good chance of winning it. 
Over the previous 15 years, Peter Blake had established an outstanding reputation winning major ocean races. His style of campaign management and charismatic leadership was the reason he was encouraged to spearhead the Team New Zealand Challenge. Once uh, we'd taken the decision that we should at least give it a good old try and uh, had gone back to New Zealand and saw that that yes, there would be support for it, provided it was properly done and provided it was led by Peter Blake. I think Peter got very enthusiastic and uh, I mean, it was quite a battle for him to take on Pippa and you know, get her to let him spend 75,000 out of the uh, domestic budget. So that's how serious it was. I had a phone call from Alan saying, look, we're approaching the deadline for getting our deposit in. And um, you know, where are we going to get it from? Of course, there's only one way we we're going to get it, and that was for me to part personally. Quite a big call, luckily caught me in a good mood. After the decision was made to launch a new challenge for America's Cup 95, Blake and close associates Alan Sefton and Ross Blackman called a meeting of the movers and shakers in New Zealand yachting. January 14, 1995, race one, round robin one of the Louis Vuitton Cup Challenger Series. And for Team New Zealand, at last, it's time to go racing. All of their two-boat testing had indicated that their black boats were something special. But it was not until they went racing that they would know for sure. The team had made the decision to start their road to the America's Cup with NZL 38. Any nagging doubts Coots and his crew may have had about the relative speed of their boat were dispelled when they comfortably won all of their first round matches. After three rounds of racing, NZL 38 was still unbeaten on the water, yet Team New Zealand still had an ace up their sleeve. A faster boat, NZL 32. We thought our 38 was going to be just fine and we'd uh, have a run for one round. <laughs> when we got to the end of the round, we thought, well, that's pretty good. We'll let it have our run for another round. And so it went on and we couldn't believe how far down the track we got with it. I think even before 38 was launched, um, we knew that 32 was, you know, as far as all the boats that they tested, that one had come out really well. And, um, you know, 38 had her modes, but uh, and had her times and conditions and that, but generally all round, 32 was a much, much better boat. And um, so the group just made that decision, and uh, I think that that was a pretty good psychological thing to do, to be able to um, retire 38 unbeaten and then bring out a new one. Um, it was a pretty, you know, cheeky almost, but there was a good, good feeling to be able to do that. During a boisterous race in round robin four of the Louis Vuitton Challenger Series, Team New Zealand was ringside to the most dramatic incident in the history of the America's Cup. For the New Zealand crew, it was a sobering experience. I mean, I think I spotted it first and said, oh, we thought, oh, and Brad was sitting down to Lewis and, uh, and he said, oh, I broke their four star. I said, no, the boat's broken. And the boat's broken and, and we could really see it broken. And, and uh, the, the first thing you think about is obviously the safety of the crew. And you hope that there aren't guys downstairs packing sails or, uh, and there's hope, hopefully the guys aren't hurt with it where, where it breaks. One of the things I can remember about being on the boat right at that time is that uh, the, whip, the guys had done whip breads and that they were they were sort of the most shocked guys because they just looked at it and thought, "Jeepers, you know, that can happen pretty quickly," you know. And they think about what could happen in a, during a whip bread race when 
There's no boats around to help you. We're just in a state of shock, really. We just couldn't believe it. In fact, we had to convince Joey was down below packing a spinnaker. He, he popped out and had a look under and he said, oh, geez, we're doing pretty well. Can't see the Australians. And uh, it took us uh, the rest of the day to convince him that uh, they'd actually sunk. He wouldn't believe it. But so we're all in a bit of shock. In fact, we had to take him back and show him the video back at dock. I think the, the Red Sox campaign really helped bring the country together. It's an easy way to show your support for something. They're bright, they're cheerful, they don't cost very much. You know that money, half the money is going to the to help the, the boat come across the line first. You want to be on board that boat. Whatever the reason, Team New Zealand recovered to dominate the last two races of the Challenger Finals and win the Louis Vuitton Cup. Black Magic NZL32 was the 29th Challenger for the America's Cup. That's it, boys. Yay! Well done. Well done. Well done, Billy. The Louis Vuitton Cup was not the ultimate prize, instead a stepping stone to the main event, because the New Zealanders had always set their sights on winning the America's Cup. committee boat. They're on port, moving out to the right. Meanwhile, the New Zealanders split tack start on starboard, out to the left. Okay, here go Young America now. They took that ship from the right. They're coming back. This will be the first cross here. They're doing it safe. Lee Bao. It's actually uh, the wind kind of faded back to the left here. So the first cross has New Zealand Lee Bowing on Team Stars and Stripes. So again, the pressure goes on Paul Kayard and his crew. Looking like around a one boat length advantage to Team New Zealand as they split out to 500 metres apart. And uh, looking there, there they go now as we come down onto water level. Team New Zealand preparing for attack. And as we go down, hang on to your breath everyone, we're going underwater and there's Team New Zealand's kill, complete with the Flames pull sharp, our animation experts giving the Kiwis a bit of a boost today as well. Suck it to them, Kiwis. Mark 1, race 5 in the America's Cup 95 and Black Magic in front. Hold this position for another five legs and the America's Cup is going to the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron, West Haven, Auckland. 21 seconds at the end of the first beat to win with the New Zealanders leading Team Stars and Stripes on Young America. Oh, personally, I was struggling to uh, hold the excitement back because I wanted to start goofing around a little bit probably halfway through the race when I felt that we had there but uh, you know we had to be make sure that that was going to be the last race of the event and finish it 
Mark five to complete right. the third and final beat to win with Black Magic still in front. Just one leg to go. And if NZL32 holds this position, the America's Cup will have a new home. The Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron, West Haven, Auckland. So this has been a very, very good game to New Zealand as they're off to win the America's Cup. Realise what you just said, Peter. 52 second advantage, and I do, I do, 144, 52 seconds. Team New Zealand still well in front of Young America. It's around 400 metres. It was 450 at the top mark, so that's been a little bit of a gain to the Americans, but I guess at this stage it's academic. And as we come down alongside Team New Zealand there, and we look at the boat just sailing along, and we duck underneath the water once more, and there it is. We are heading, people, to 5-0. It wasn't until we got within about know, half a mile of the final finish line People dared speak. They started to get a sort of a twitter on excitement. And, uh, and away it went, of course. They couldn't control themselves. Twelve years ago, the call went out to stay Stand Up Australia. Now in 1995, it's Stand Up New Zealand. Black Magic is about to sail to an unprecedented 5 0 win and convincing victory. The America's Cup is now New Zealand's Cup and for only the second time in 144 years the most illustrious and elusive of prizes in sailing international sports oldest prize leaves the United States this time to a different down under New Zealand! That's it. see that we were totally, uh, we you know, could let it all out and certainly enjoy the whole moment, you know, and uh, as far as enjoying a regatta, you know, it was most enjoyable right from the very beginning and those last five races were just fantastic for our whole team, you know, we all enjoyed it completely and just finishing it and pulling outside the boat in San Diego Yacht Club and that all part is a very magical part of our lives. I think everyone saw uh, on the television with the celebrations afterwards that just how excited everyone was and, uh, and how elated. I think just the adrenaline and obviously the Moe champagne was just running through our bloodstreams at a million miles an hour. And I think, you know, that was just one of the, that was just the greatest day in all our lives, definitely my life, and I don't, don't think we'll ever forget it. was good, you know, it, you know you'd, I can remember looking around at the stage and just looking at the individuals and picking out, you know, some certain things that each, each of them had contributed just in my own brain, you know, so there we, we were standing on the dock, there wasn't many of us, it was a small team in America's Cup terms, we had spent a lot of money in America's Cup terms, but as a team we'd, we'd made the right decisions and I think, uh, you know, that was, that was a great moment there when you, when you finally realised that we'd won the thing. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. For the second time in 144 years, the Cup will leave America. Congratulations to Team New Zealand, the winner of the Louis Vuitton Cup. Thank you very much. Relaxed at last, Blake was enjoying the party. I'm um, not really fit to tell you anything right now. <laughs> we got it! <laughs> Come on, you big show pony, this way. <laughs> we're off. We got We've you. got it. We're out of here. Plug in it. Plug it. Plug it. No, 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 no wonder my champagne. No wonder the champagne didn't go very far. I know. It's, it's only about that deep. We'll have, to, we'll have to make a few modifications. We'll have to get Roy. Hey, Pete. <laughs>
the biggest thrill, I guess, is to be able to say we did it. When a lot of people would have said, you know, you're never going to do it, it's impossible. Bullshit. It's not impossible at all. You can make any dream happen if you work your way at it enough. At Los Angeles Airport, Team New Zealand was given a special farewell before boarding a charter flight for the long trip home. And Craig Monk got to celebrate his birthday at 30,000 feet. Everybody keeps coming up and telling us, I don't think you have any idea how big it's going to be at home. Like a crowd chanting Gandhi, perhaps. Maybe bigger. As they flew into a new day, the team got their first glimpse of the country they'd been sailing for. The spectacular welcome to Auckland was a sign of things to come. Meaty will be decided to celebrate. Has Meaty started crying yet? After nearly a decade of trying, finally, the America's Cup was in New Zealand. It was party time. For Team New Zealand, the welcome home was a once in a lifetime experience. I'm waving, I'm waving with you. You're the worst way. More waves in the Southern Ocean, mate. The big part was actually coming in from the airport on the bus and having the streets lined with all the old people out of rest homes and, uh, and the schools closing down, all the kids coming out. And, uh, and it was just, it was huge. It was really, you know, I couldn't believe it. Then we got to, I thought, okay, we're going to go up Queen Street, we're going to be, Queen Street's going to be lined and we're going to get a ticket tape break. Great. And yet you start off around the corner and you're coming up with the Queen Street, all the people and they're up this side, up the streets and hanging out of buildings. And I thought, oh, this is huge. <laughs> couldn't believe it. And then you're Wellington's the same in Christchurch and the need of a uh, population, I think, of 100. 30,000, 90,000 I believe turned out for the parade. I thought this is just great. I knew it would be something special out here. It was just incredible and I just couldn't believe that the, the people, you know, like all sorts of people who were just following the thing right from day one and uh, we were just so uh, moved by the whole thing. And, yeah, it was incredible, really. It was quite sort of awesome, really. You know, you've never been sort of subject to that kind of uh, devotion from people. It was very, very humbling. to end it in this way, to actually uh, have Connor in the final and put him out of his misery and then bring the event to New Zealand. I mean, it was mind-blowing. And uh, to know that it's you know, been such a big event here it's, and to see the people and the young kids to the old people that have got behind it, it was just humbling, really. We did have country on board, the boys felt it, they really, really did. So coming home, well, uh, and that, that's something that, that uh, no one is ever going to forget. And I would suggest that they're never going to experience it ever again. That was a once-up.